Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros, kids. We got a real live pilot on the show, D'Anthony. Yeah. A real live pilot or pirate? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What, what do you prefer? <clears throat> I have my, my training partner when I went through uh, flying 747, he calls us pirates. So. <laughs> is that like a speech impediment or is he uh, no, just like yeah. really into uh, to Jack? What's his uh, name? Jack Sparrow. Sparrow. Yeah. yeah no, yeah. he just he calls us pirates. So. Did you ever see that fucking music video that Lonely Island did with Michael Bolton? great this is the tale hilarious one of the best go look it up of tortuga <laughs> um yeah the isle, isle of tortuga yeah the isle of tortuga <laughs> it's amazing it, i i don't even know your real name i only know you was 74 gear i'm yeah. sure you get that all the time right yeah i've had people walking down the street scream out 74 gear yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it's great 74 gear that's it that's it kelsey kelsey yeah yeah but nobody knows your last name Nope, that's been out there too. Um, I did a radio interview and the guy put it on there and then a few uh, journalists that published it, but I don't ever put it out there, but yeah. Yeah, you have one of the biggest aviation channels on YouTube. Mm -hmm. yep. How wild is that? Weird, yeah, it's weird. I, I honestly, I started it, I was doing these layovers. We were doing uh, Hong Kong to Delhi and back. Okay. And it's a really, I didn't enjoy it because you know, you're coming, you're flying all night in that airspace, you're going over a lot of, people that don't speak English very well, and then you're flying all night and flying all the way back, and then I'd have two days in Hong Kong, it was middle of summer, and, and it's kind of like New York, mm -hmm. but hot and humid. It's like New York with Miami's weather. So during the daytime, I was just kind of hanging in the hotel, and I thought, well, I should just do something. Maybe I'll just make some YouTube videos. So I mean, it was join the Communist Party or like, right. YouTube yeah, videos. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Either one, so. Right. So, uh, the other one, I think you chose of, wisely. There's a lot of paperwork in joining a political party and stuff. <laughs> Nobody wants to do that. Tons. Bullshit. Tons, or you can just take over a city in a day and just kind of, you know, you're good to go there. Um, 677,000 subscribers. How many years ago did you get started? About three years ago. About three years ago. Yeah. It's weird. We've been doing this about six, and we have 80, we're, we've had 85,000 subscribers for, man, maybe a good year now at this point. Yeah, it's, you a, it's a grind. You haven't had, like, uh, Alex Jones on your show at all, right? No, probably not. That probably right? had something to do with it. Yeah. No. Well, I, or, I just or Milo I'd love, or... I'd, I'd love to hear. I'm going to... I talked to Alex yesterday. I would love to hear his thoughts on the airline industry. It's <laughs> like, hey, this is what I want to do. I just want to free, free flow with him just to pitch him topics. I'm like, go! <laughs> um, yeah, we, it's, it's odd. The reason I ask and, and why I say it in such a downer way like that, yep. anybody who tries to have like a YouTube following will fail. If you just do it in your hotel room and just say, ah, I was bored, every single person that comes on the show has got a huge YouTube channel, right. same exact answer. The rest of us who are spending all this money on this <laughs> fucking bullshit and all these people, it's, it, it means nothing, like zero. It, it's a lot of work, though. It's a, I mean, it's a lot of effort, but a lot of times people say, oh, well, what, what is the lighting setup? Your lighting's fluctuating. I'm like, yeah, it's called the sun. I, I got it next to a window at the hotel. That, that's, <laughs> that's my lighting setup. Uh, they're like, how do you travel around with all your lights? And I was like, I got a camera and then the sun, and that's... That's basically it. Yeah, we, we were literally on the phone. We, we have been for like the last two months with some Vietnamese kid okay. who's charging it. Whenever you get like, hey, we've got to charge you in USD, it was just like, oh, what are you? Or, was there something else that you were hoping for? <laughs> Great. And he's working on our YouTube now. We've picked up about 18 subscribers in the last uh, two weeks. So I feel good about that. The direction you're going? All of it. Yeah. All of it. Um, luckily, our, our bread and butter is audio, right? right. So you're hoping this algorithm or whatever it is flips and then you get a gajillion people and then we could literally double business overnight but for you when was the flip for you when it was just like oh shit i'm getting so many subscribers this is crazy i gotta turn my phone off so i turn so it was maybe i did this hollywood versus reality where i break down these movies right mm -hmm. and i had uh, I had gotten an email from a guy that said, hey, can you uh, do this, explain this movie? It was Sully real, is what he said. Can you explain if Sully's real? And I just emailed him back. I was like, yeah, Sully was real. Like, that was it. And he's like, no, but like, break it down on your YouTube channel. Explain how it's real or not. I was like, what? Okay, sure. And I did it. And I, I recorded it in Germany. And uh, then I uploaded it. And not paying attention. You know, you can schedule the time. Sure. I, I wasn't really paying attention. And I was, I don't know, jet lagged or whatever. And I scheduled it. And it, and it launched at like three in the morning or something. I was like, well, that's a 
pretty terrible time for that to go. So yeah. I, I just kind of wrote it off as a it would never go anywhere. And then just, I think it was like Christmas morning, I woke up and it just, I'd gained like 3,000 subscribers in a day or something like that. And I thought, <laughs> whoa, like this is like, and that, to me, that was a massive jump, right? It, 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 for us, holy shit. I, I feel like I'm with Buzz Aldrin on the goddamn moon over there. But, you know, this, uh, I did this TikTok roast where I roasted all these TikTokers a couple months ago. Uh -huh. People were say, hey, is this real? Is this real? And I, I kind of, I'd been seeing these people do this and I just had enough. And I said, all right, I'll just make a video explaining that this is not real. Sure. And so I went out and I roasted a lot of these TikTokers uh, and I didn't really think anything of it. But then uh, I woke up one morning and I looked at my phone and it, I'd had like 100,000 views in an hour. And I thought, uh-oh, like that's a lot of views to get in an hour. Oh, and yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. thought, yeah. I'm, I don't know, sex tape leaked or something. I didn't know what had happened, but I thought that's not, it was something bad. And I just looked and it was just, there was, just, there was comments every five seconds on that video mm -hmm. and then that thing went viral and uh yeah that I, it has here's what i got six, out of six that million whole, views here's what i yeah. got out of that and whole like, story when you saw the channel blowing up your first concern uh was that a sex tape had been released which tells me that one exists <laughs> yes <laughs> otherwise that wouldn't even been no a one brings that up unless it's somewhere on yeah. a laptop right yeah well, well Usually you're going viral for something bad, right? Yeah. That's typically, yeah. it's not like, hey man, that was so great what you did. That's usually not what everybody, you know, so that's why I thought instantly something had gone wrong. That's, well, so. Look, that things, who's had a sex tape leak though in the last 20 years and it's worked out poorly for them? C correct. Kim. Uh, Hulk Hogan. There's a couple of them. <laughs> no, not he, really. He made a lot of money He's on that. He's $140 million well, dollars richer now. We didn't know. And yeah. Gawker is coming, Until, Gawker's you know. coming back. Well, if. I mean, look, how, what did Kim Kardashian know about that situation? Right. Either, right? You know, like, it could have worked. It could have not worked. I, I heard the mom was in charge of that, and she was just like, look, if we're going to put this out, let's go ahead and make this 50-50, because they, they still get residuals off of it. Mm. Do you, did she, her, her mom put that out? So my, my, get, my here's what I heard, okay. right, behind the scenes is that, uh, it had kind of gotten out right. and there was the decision of like, look, do we release this professionally and then try to monetize it or just kind of let it go and then see what happens. And, uh, I heard she made the call of, yeah, I, I let's go ahead and stamp this and, uh, and get a copyright on it. Wow. I yeah, didn't know that. Yeah. And that's a, that's a ballsy move. Cause it could go either way. Right. I mean, well, look, uh, but a failed sex tape, you don't, you never hear about, right? That's right. True. Cause we've, we've had, gosh. China, you remember China, the wrestler? No. Yeah, okay. there, were, there was one of her that kind of leaked, and then she ended up doing porn later. Uh, oh. And it, yeah, uh, Giorgio, our producer, is a big fan of that. Got big it. fan of China. R.I.P. She's she's uh, that's no China with, with a, us that's now. China with a Y. With a Y, yeah, correct. Absolutely. Okay. So it can go bad. And I I sat down with uh, God, the guy from Vivid, um, in an airport one oh. time. Oh, Ironically, wow. yeah, we were uh, delayed on a flight, and I asked him. Uh, I just said, look, what's give me everything that you've gotten and, and shit that you couldn't publish. And he right. goes, oh, there's there's awful ones that I could never publish in a million years. Oh, like the tape is just bad handheld guy or something? that. And some of the content was so gross. He was just like, uh -huh. I don't know that anybody would want to see this. <laughs> Dead serious. Wow. And, yeah. And people sell that to Vivid. They try to. Oh, got it. So that's their, you know. That's the way they're leaking it. Like, oh, it leaked. Like, 100%. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. So you roll well, in. Well, that's definitely what the Paris Hilton dude did, that creepy dude. Mm -hmm. he, made that, he made that film. I don't think it was with Vivid. It was somebody else. But it was uh, a, a Night in Paris or something. Yeah, One Night called. in Paris. One Night in Paris, yeah. yeah. I don't remember which production company it was, but he definitely just went direct. There was no leak. He went directly to them and sold that motherfucker for yes. $25,000, which is weird because he had a lot more than $25,000 already. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, it's I don't, strange. I don't know what the game plan. I think that was his clout. Yeah, yeah. And you can see him. If you've never seen this, it's not. Forget about her in the porn. She's boring as fuck. Uh, yeah. Nothing exciting happens in the whole thing. But his commentary behind the scene, mm -hmm. where he's standing in the lobby watching it on the same kind of TV that Michael Scott had in his fucking house when he lived with Jan. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like this tiny TV <laughs> on the wall, and he's like, smacking gun. Like, yeah, this is what I fucked her. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is the cringiest piece of shit that I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I'd rather hear Hulk Hogan say the N word than listen to that guy smack down. Same, same. Now, when, with your sex tape, were you in a pilot outfit? Were yeah. you in the costume? No, but I should. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, you should yeah. just not. You have to get one that isn't issued by the company. Yeah. Right. Well, I got some. I got some uniform shirts without the wings on them. Right. Yeah. yeah. You, a lot does, of my buddies who are firefighters and cops that do content do the same shit. They just rip yeah. them off. Yeah. 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 Or they or they just buy separate uniforms or whatever. Yeah. Right. Because you are a pilot in real life, and I know a lot of people ask that, but you, that's true. You can confirm it right yeah i can confirm that okay yeah. so you're still flying still flying well so you, you were after this before the show right so <laughs> once this airs that yeah. that might end but yeah <laughs> so uh you weren't in the military you took the civilian route to correct. become a commercial pilot correct describe for the because that's most of the people we know because we're all military people right uh, uh, there's that, a, that's how we know people becoming pilots so how did there, how there's did a lot of military guys that are f- were military, but were not able to get a flying slot. Right. Then yeah, had yeah. to come out yeah, yeah. and do it, do it the civilian mm-hmm. route, right, with their GI Bill or whatever. But right. yeah, you got to go through flight school, and then it's just. Is that like a college, or is that like something separate? Because there's a couple different ways you can go through colleges like mm-hmm. Purdue or Emory Riddle that mm-hmm. they're just specifically for aviation. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can do it that way, or you can just go to like a mom and pop flight mm-hmm. school, and and. Have a flight instructor and yeah. he signs you off. You do your exams and and honestly, you have to start on like smaller because mo- mom and pop places don't have 747s. I imagine. Well, no flight school has a 747 right. to start with. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're starting the same small plane. Okay. Really, it doesn't really matter if you go to a very expensive flight school or you go to mom and pop. Uh, you know, a lot of people think oh, I'm going to go to the expensive flight school. It's going to make me better. It's not like, you know, if you go to Harvard Law, mm. you're going to probably be a better lawyer because you're going to have better professors and mm. et cetera, et cetera. In flight school, it's really about like how hard are you going to work, the effort you put in after the fact. Hmm. So it's a it's a little bit different. So you way. go to flight school, yep. right? And you you're getting checked out on smaller like single engine aircraft. Correct. Like that. Yeah. And, and then, then what's the next step after that? You, once you get all that, you'll get a multi engine in a small plane like a four seater, hmm. and then it's just all about building flight time. Yeah. Because to get to any airline in the U.S., you need fifteen hundred hours, or a thousand to fifteen hundred hours, depending on the type of school you go to. So. And how long does that take? Depends how hard you work. Um, you know, a couple of years. I mean, you have, there, there's a lot more FAA regulations on how much time you could spend in the air and how much time you need for rest, even in flight school now, right? Yeah, so, I think they've changed it. I mean, for, for airline pilots, obviously, it's highly regulated right. uh, what you're allowed to do and the amount of crew members that you need. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, with flight schools, it's a, it's a different set of rules as far as how much you can go fly. And, but, you know, mm-hmm. you know, the thing is, is, Imagine being outside in a plane right now, how hot it is outside, and limited AC or no AC, because some of the planes are you know, built in the 70s or early 80s. Right. It's so hot and draining on your body. Yeah, no shit. So, yeah. It's like driving a fucking NASCAR. People think that's not work. <clears throat> Motherfucker, it's work. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's like 120 degrees on that track. Right. Yeah. So you'll get in there, and you'll just be sweating for an hour and a half. Mm. Then you get out, and then you grab some water, and then a new student comes in. And you know, they're, you know, a lot of times flight instructors say, you know, I'm sick of people trying to kill me. Because yeah. you know, you're trying to learn how to fly. It's... It's 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 being, dynamic. Being a flight instructor seems like a really bad idea. Yes. Like I, I've, I've we've defeated gravity. I'm going to teach other people to defeat gravity. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm all set on that. And I had, dude, I had a kid that I lived with in college. He was the youngest one to receive his pilot's license in the state of Ohio, and he was 14 years old. Right. And I was like, who fucking flew with you for at, <laughs> at 12 to get that thing? Well, you can get your private pilot license. You just need, uh, I think it's 40 hours of flight time. That's it? That's yeah. it. That's private pilot. So that just all that, that's not, you can do nothing except fly with, for your, by yourself or with somebody else. You can't. Oh, that's what he was doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. For, yeah. so you, you want to talk about the most money move of all time? He was flying girls out on dates oh, in, yeah. in college. And it was like, how do you beat that? Right. No, that's big money. Yeah. yeah. Well, he had a fucking rich you know, mom and dad who got him that plane. Right. I mean, I mean, it depends on your plane, right? I sat, I sat next to a guy um, on, on a flight a couple of days ago on a commercial flight. I was just a passenger and we were talking. He, he has a huge software company. And he, I saw him reading this checklist. Mm-hmm. I said, what's that for? He goes, oh, I'm thinking about buying a plane. Now I'm in uniform. So uh, we start talking aircraft. And uh, he, he, said, he said, you know, I, I started the software company. I had, you know, I met this girl and I took her out on this date. And we were going to go up to, I think, Napa. Mm-hmm. And he goes, we're flying in it, it, this just crappy plane. And she's looking out the window and like cars are driving faster than us up the freeway. You know, and he's yeah. just like, he's like, this is going like terrible. But he, he goes, I tried so hard. Then we land, we go get food. The plane breaks down. Mm-hmm. He's got to like go fix the plane, you know, and, and, and he drops her off. He goes, I'll never hear from her again. Right. And so he tells me they've been married for like 25 years now. He goes, 
She said, I tried so hard. She was just like, felt bad for me. So she yeah. gave him another shot. I was like, good for you. It's expensive. You have a private plane? Really expensive. Very expensive. Yes. Uh, and again, you need some form of money behind you to do it. Like all my friends that have it now, because a lot of people, you know, as they get older, they get rich and they're like, oh man, I'd love to fly. Right. And so they get, a, I'm sure you deal with these assholes yeah. all the time. Yeah. And it's, you know, they go, oh man, it's great. You see the pictures on, on Facebook and everything else. Right. And you're like, oh, congratulations. That's awesome. Somebody else is taking care of all of that shit. It's, right. it's like a boat where you drop it off and you're like, great. Why don't you wash, clean it and gas it the fuck up, put some food and drinks in it. And I'll see you next time, whenever that is. And there's a lot of maintenance that goes into that. Yes. I, everything, everything airplane is like five times the cost. Yeah. Yeah. You need a tire? Oh, normally it'd be like 150. It's $700. And you're like, what? Yeah. 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 Luckily, you can just steal the tires off other planes. I don't know why there isn't more <laughs> airplane piracy. You know what I mean? Like pull a plane up to another plane. You've got a gang of dudes. Fly a fucking black flag up. Just walk across the wing. It's not fucking hard. It's too... Well, we found that out yesterday. Yes, it is. Uh, no, don't, that's don't take the, a C-17 out of Afghanistan. Yeah, you're, you're hanging on to... <laughs> that doesn't work out. As no. Gaining it, altitude. You have to already be... Oh, like, on the ground? Yeah, you, you have to be on a respirator at that, that level. I you would know, imagine just jacking the plank. Do you have to jack it up, the tire, to, to put it up on something to change it? To get the tire off? Yeah, yeah. Do, when you call AAA when your tire goes out on mm -hmm. a plane, right? Do okay. they jack that fucker? How does that work? So on my plane, on my work plane, yeah. yeah, there's a huge hydraulic jack they come in. Yeah. And they need like five guys. And this is why I'm saying you can't just steal a tire. But he, you're talking much. about a small plane, right? Or are you yeah. talking about like no, my no, type of plane? plane. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah, a small plane, you could probably get a couple dudes and just lift it up. I mean, they don't weigh but like, you know, 1,500 pounds. Yeah. You could just have some guys loosen the tires and just probably lift it up and yank the tire mm -hmm. up. What do you squat that you can do that? Like you personally? Uh, when I was going to the gym all the time, probably like 225. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You, you've never, you never had a football team at your high school flip a car over because... Oh, no, no. We, yes, yes. We have did we've, that a lot. We, yeah, we flipped it over, burned yeah. it, uh, did that in college as well. Uh, but Homeboy was flying from Columbus to Cincinnati, and uh, there was a nice restaurant there, and that was his move. Well, that's a money move. Yeah. I mean, especially if you've got a nice plane, because... <laughs> Fly, she, flying from Columbus to Cincinnati is not a money move. It, it's, no, mon it's money it, because it's why. special. Flying from yes. anywhere in Ohio to anywhere else in Ohio is not special. But, 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 but you're flying, it's the sunset, not yeah, everybody yeah. gets to do it, so it's like, oh, I get, look at me. I get that part of Corn, it. Corn, you're, 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 you're flying over the fields yeah. and all that stuff. The, the scenery's you beautiful, where you're like, oh, this is the Midwest, you right. know? Yeah. This is great. You, you stop too soon. Because here, here's the thing. What else is every other dude? Oh, get in my car. Let's go over exactly. here. Exactly. Like, so this is something that's unique. Yeah. Look, I mean, then I guess the added benefit is if you find out she's a communist, you can throw her out. Yeah, you I, could I, if you I, wanted to. I don't think you can do that. Oh, you okay. can't? Legally, you can't do that legally anymore? Legally, you can't. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. well, see, the laws the, that I obey are the physical laws of the universe. Oh, okay. Then that works. There, there's yeah. somebody that there was recently, obviously, you know about the people getting taped up on the plane, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So before that, there was... That's well, hilarious, by the way. Right. Well, Every time that happens, I laugh. I don't care what the circumstances well, yeah, are. Where's the air marshal? Like, why Why does it take a, a stewardess or a stew, as, the, as they call the male ones, right? Right, yeah. To, to duct tape you to the seat. Where's the, where's the air marshal? Not every flight has an air marshal, though. Really? And the air marshals, I don't know, I mean, on how, where to draw the line as far as what I say, but they, they make their decision as far as when it's safety of flight, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. If it's someone just being a dick to the flight attendants, they're just going to be like, okay, that's not yeah. my problem, right? Yeah. I'm eating my sandwich, right? Yeah. But yeah. if someone's trying to breach the flight deck. Or that kid trying to kick the fucking window out. That's probably yeah. not a bad idea. Yeah, that's yeah. never going to uh, work. There's an air marshal on every flight I'm on. <laughs> Coincidentally, it's, it's me. Yeah. It's me. Anytime anybody even fucking breathes the wrong way, I stand up and I yell, I am the law, like Judge Dredd, every yeah. single time. Uh, let's and then get, I growl at them. I get right in their face. Like you have that. to. You have to. Uh, let's, get, let's get down to brass here, okay? okay? All right. Why is every fucking flight getting canceled? <laughs> Dan and I can't get go anywhere. I, I, heard, I, I heard that. I heard you guys had some, some problems. No, there. no, no. Not problems. Every, Every single flight is Actually, canceled. last weekend, so, my flight's there and back, both on time, normal flights. Okay. Really? The first but, two in a row in probably two years for me. Yeah. That's weird, because I fly all the time. I was listening to you guys the other day, and you guys had the American flight and cancels and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I fly all the time. I fly an American all the time. I never, ever have any problems. And I'm, I'm all over the world. Mm -hmm. And I never have any problems. So it could be you guys it could well, be. Yeah. And, and the other 500 people at the airport. So here, here's the thing. So when COVID broke out, everybody thought this is going to go on for a while, including myself. I mean, I, I do 
I do, uh, when I'm flying passengers, it's pretty limited, but we'll do uh, special charters for sports teams. We do a lot of military charters uh, for, for troops and things like that, but the vast majority is freight, right? So I thought, well, this is not going to affect me that bad, but for the passenger airline, they decided, okay, well, we're going to let these older guys take an early retirement because this is going to be a while before it gets back to normal. Right. So a lot of guys took that because if you look at that era at the very beginning of this is going on, it seemed like this is going to be a while, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of these guys that are 62 and over were able to take an early retirement. They let a lot of flight attendants uh, say, hey, we can take like a year leave of absence or two year leave of absence. They didn't, nobody was hiring anything, all that stuff. But then it just snapped back so aggressively with the amount of people and the demand for flying. Right. You can't just, you know, it takes several months to train a pilot one pilot. Yeah. So you can't just snap back. So the demand came back so fast that nobody was ready for it. So the demand came back. Now you have planes that are having to get pulled out of the desert. You have the maintenance on those. You have the flight attendants. All my friends that are flight attendants, they're like, we are working like so much overtime right now. Mm. And then, so mm. then when you have all that demand, the maintenance doesn't get taken care of because you have so many planes that are flying and they're not having that sit time to repair them. So then the plane breaks. Now you have a crew stranded, which means the next flight that that crew is going to be on, it just gets <clears throat> on and on and on. Yeah, because uh, so Alex Guerrero, like I was saying, was here on, on Sunday and he had, was listening to the show when I got back from Iowa about the, the flights being canceled and right. everything else. And he goes, man, I hope that doesn't happen to me. And I go, I don't know anybody who's made it recently. Um, so I dropped him when I dropped him off at the airport. I got a text five hours later and he goes, still here. <laughs> And he said, but, and here's what we've heard over and over and over again. Uh, and this happened to you, Dan, as well. Uh, this was his situation. They just got on and they said, hey, we don't have a pilot and we don't have a crew. Well, mm -hmm. it was like the crew is going to time out by the time they make your flight. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so yeah, if you, you have a certain work day that you're allowed to do, there's yeah. a certain, there's a certain hours in the day that you work. And then there's a certain limit as far as for the hours that you're actually on the plane operating. So you have the limit on two things. So if you start off and your first flight goes fine, and then, I don't know, your second flight has a big problem, mm. well, now your third flight's going to have a problem. Right, yeah. So Or you get stuck with weather. or That's mm. why in the wintertime there's so many problems. You will have a delay for weather in New York, and then you're you know, going L.A. to Phoenix, but that plane was going to come from New York, so now they're scrambling for a plane. So yeah. wait till the wintertime if they don't. I'm convinced I'm going to die on a plane. Build more planes, okay. man. Yeah. Also, let's just, I am for real. Let's get rid of uh, Stu's in general <laughs> and just go on the honor system. Yeah, but just put Chianti in every single row, and it's honor system. Or, hey, just tell me how many glasses you've had. Well, right now you just get pretzels and a, and a water. Oh, you get nothing. It's like Afghanistan over there, okay. like on the fucking flights. Like, you get nothing. So they got like pretzels and a water, so you could just leave it in the middle like Hunger Games style. Did you, see that, did you see that flight last night? Pull that up if you can. It was, uh, what were they on? C-17? Was, yeah, they, no, no, no. There oh. were 620 47. people. Oh, in the back. Y y yes. Yeah, yeah, I did see that All sitting together. I didn't even know that was a real thing. That might have been a 130, because... I think when 30s have a seating area of 100 that they build into that middle part, right? Yeah, but I don't think you could fit when 600 people. Yeah. Yeah. There it is right there. That middle part. You couldn't yeah. fit. That, you couldn't, that's not a C-130 on the inside. So, that's yeah, well, so what, what is this? That might be a C-5. Yeah, that's got to be like a C-5. Because that's not, I mean, that, you couldn't fix 600 people in a C-130. No, a C-5 will fit three Abrams tanks end to end, but that's it. Okay. So that's like what? 90 feet maybe that's yeah that's a c5 problem. that's yeah. what it's like flying today um <laughs> and you get no you get no food you get no beverage uh I, you've got to wear a mask if it comes down just below the tip of your nose sir sir we're gonna turn the way around you're gonna fucking get blah, 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 blah. well it's tough for the flight attendants right because the, you don't want to be on a crew where somebody is videotaping somebody with their mask off right because yeah. and then you get lit the fuck up by the organization right, for it they, God, it's so stupid it sucks man. for the flight attendants because they're there and it's like I, i'm sure there's flight attendants that don't want to be doing this either or be the mask police yeah. but if they get recorded and there's a photo and that person tweets it to american and then they go what's the flight mm. number <clears throat> then that whole crew gets called in now that crew yeah. has it's like it sucks i'm not gonna get mad at the pilots or flight attendants they're or just trying to do their job any more yeah. than i'm gonna get mad at people who work at target for the fact that it closes at 10 p.m or whatever right like can you imagine standing outside open the goddamn doors man <laughs> yeah. like shut yeah. the fuck up and go home dude. <laughs> you know the rules no lie though i think i'm gonna die on a plane wow. um i i I, there's, I've had so many problems on them. Um, one time, a stewardess got knocked out. Uh, it dropped so fast, she hit her head on the fucking ceiling. Okay. And um, they had to pull, 
drag her legs back and get her, the, did they her, duct her buddies. Did they duct tape her to a seat? Close. I mean, what if it happens again? They had to, they had to hold on to her. I, that's what I, I didn't know. But there was a moment, and somebody else had said this on another podcast. I want to say it was Theo Vaughn or somebody like that. Uh, fuck, I forget who the guest was. But for you know who people are and what they're doing. I mean, because people are fucking screaming and shit, and like right. some things came down from the ceiling. And me... I, for whatever reason, there was just like a calmness to it of like, oh man, after all these delayed flights and everything, like <laughs> this is it. This is exactly what I expected. And the weird thing was, is like I had a drink and like obviously shit was flying everywhere. Right. I had the fortitude to grab it and hold on to it. One, hmm, two, nice. I just I had one last like gulp of it and I was like, well, let's go take it. Never felt calmer in my life, and I and I and I ended up living. Well, what do you? What I mean in that scenario, what could mm -hmm. you really do? Not exactly, 100%. What could you really do? So we've talked about this numerous times, Dan and I, on the show, of could you masturbate in that period of time before it, it, it crashes and hits the ground and you die, right? Yeah. If you're at 35... One guy, who was, we had a guest on here who said he was convinced he could do it. And I was like, uh, maybe, no, he couldn't. If you're at 35,000 feet in a, in a 747 mm -hmm. or 37, how long is that free fall before you hit the ground? Are you talking like wings come off? Dead. No, no. I mean, oh, no, yeah, because oh, I, don't, yeah, I don't know. Let's yeah. say the, the could, engines are gone, but the well, wings you, are still if, there. If the engines are gone, you got, I don't know, an hour? I mean, you got. You can coast for a while. Yeah, oh, there's a long. Well. There, there was a 330 once that they had a fuel leak. They were going to uh, Europe, across the ocean. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where it's like the, it's the highest risk of having a fuel mm. leak because you, know, you got to get somewhere to land. You're in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. So they had a fuel leak and they ran out of gas. And they ended up coasting for like 45 minutes, 50 minutes, and ended up landing at a military base. Holy shit. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so now wings it. come off. How, what's that? Yeah, wings for? come off. What do we got? What's terminal velocity? That's it. Terminal velocity of a plane. I'm so. asking the guy that's trained on the fucking aircraft. Okay. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah, what, what, do you, what, do, what do we do got? Do some math. Do how, how long do we have? Yeah, I don't know. You probably got a couple minutes, probably three, four minutes. There you go. So. I, I, could you do it? I've everybody's yeah three four minutes. Everybody's done that. I, I mean, think. have you done a halo jump before? No. Okay. No, but I've jumped from. Let's see. So if you do a halo jump, it'd be what six minutes, right? Roughly. Uh, so, yeah. So if you did it, I'm th I'm guessing the air, the plane's going to be a little bit more aerodynamic. So I'm saying half that. So. Okay. That'd be my guess. Yeah, three four minutes, and then then, then then yes, it's possible. That's absolutely possible. Yeah, you could do it. I mean, it's going to be a lot of focus. Yeah, that you, would, you gotta be, you, and you have to have the foresight to be thinking. When this happens, like, oh, yeah, it, 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 the rules don't matter. Like, no, yeah, yeah, someone's yeah. eating their pretzels next yep. to you, but you don't care. Yeah. Like, you're just, here we go. I looked at everybody else's reactions, though, around, like, everybody was just screaming and crying. And, yeah. like, and I was like, all right, cool. It felt like I was in a movie, like, uh, like in Garden State when he gets on the plane and his parents are dead. Right. And you're just like, oh, uh, yeah. It was in a, it was wild. But you know what's funny is that, like, everyone in the back is screaming, but the door, <laughs> that separation, that door, you, and we got our headphones on and stuff. We can't even hear all that that's going on. People are freaking out. We don't know. That and was my next question. Yeah. So you have no idea. I mean, we know that, hey, this was really turbulent. So people are going to be startled, right? Mm -hmm. But what, what if you wanted to hear it? That's the only way you can, <laughs> the only way you can get off. I could yeah. like reach and open the door and like take my headphones <laughs> off and listen. Like that's, that's what I wanted to hear. It's, yeah. it's, it's about two minutes of well, free fall from 28,000. So from 35, it'd be probably about 220, 230, something like that. That was a pretty like good guess, huh? Yeah. Three? So. I would say, yeah, three minutes, probably in an airport. Three minutes, okay. Yeah, and then that's plenty of time. Yeah, it's plenty of time. It's plenty of time. That's longer than you last. There's, there's <laughs> a, yeah, exactly. There's, there's, a, there's another time, though, where I took off deliberately in a horrific situation, and they asked people, like, they were like, hey, do you, are you sure you guys want to do this? Um, and the then pilots they did it. asked the, fl the passengers? The, stu the stewardesses did when we walked on, and it was, uh, it was, wow. a, it was a hurricane. Okay. Uh, a hurricane was coming to, or supposedly. They, they had kind of guessed what the cone was that was coming to New Orleans, and they'd canceled the flights to the, for the rest of the nights and everything else, and they were like, this is the last flight out of there. I got on with my wife, and we were like, fuck it. Let's just, it was with the Rolling Stones uh, an anniversary. And we were like, fuck it, let's just do it. So here's the thing. The pilots, at the end of the day, they have all the up-to-date weather information, and we don't want to die. Right. So that's that's the thing that when people are like, oh, but I'm scared and blah, blah, blah. And I'm yeah. like, well, the pilots who are trained in this, who've been doing this for years, they don't want to die either. Mm -hmm. So they're, we're not going to go fly. I've flown into hurricanes uh, coming into Texas and other things like that. And I got a radar. I have all the stuff. I have air traffic control who's giving me live information. Some planes have live feed with the weather mapping. So we can see everything. And at the end of the day, we're not going anywhere. We think Hey, this isn't going to work out, right? You know what uh, I mean? I wish I would have known this. So I, I get on, uh, everybody else, I think it was four people total, right? So it was me and my <laughs> wife, and then like two other strangers like in the back. 
And uh, afterwards, like I was so grateful to the pilot because it was windy and rainy and all that other stuff. Right. And I was like, thank you. This was, you were amazing. This was amazing and everything else. And he, he shook my hand and gave me like the, the nice like fatherly sully look of yeah. like, no problem, sir. But you're telling me that he knew all along and was just fucking willing to hear my bullshit. The, the, the crew probably were like, you sure you want to do this? Because they just wanted to go to the hotel and go party or relax <laughs> is probably what they're like. Are you sure you want to do this? Because we can't wait. <laughs> probably. This is going to be like a 47 hour overnight here. We kind of want to stay, right? So yeah. that's probably. Where were you at? Where were you flying out of? Uh, I was flying from Wilmington, North Carolina to New Orleans. Oh, and uh, the yeah. hurricane was coming into New Orleans. And it did, it did end up coming uh, in. Uh, it wasn't Katrina. No. Okay. <laughs> no, yeah. no. We're going in. No. Come on. I, I flew into. Uh, I'm not Sean Penn, brother. I flew into Hong Kong a few years ago when this massive. Uh, it's not, they, they don't have it called a hurricane. It's what's what's the other one? Uh, typhoon. Typhoon. Yeah. yeah. So there's a typhoon coming. And then I get this message. Hey, Kelsey, we need you to fly this and you're going to be the last flight into Hong Kong. I'm like what like it's kidding in like a few hours they're like but yeah. you, we got time to get you in and then we're gonna you're gonna land and then we're gonna run you to the other side of the airport and commercial you over to taiwan i was like R really <laughs> yeah. okay you don't want to you don't want your op order to have the phrase the last anything yeah 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 right so Fuck that we did it we flew it in we landed we ran over to the other side of the terminal and uh, yeah we flew out and i spent like three days in taiwan just let let Hong Kong get beat up, and then I don't I don't remember what happened. Now is that. Taiwan a country, or does China own that? Okay, because I, I saw the John Cena video and I didn't know. I, I mean, was kind of confused. I, I think the Taiwanese say that they that it's their their own country, and I think the Chinese say that it's their country. I, I don't know. When okay. I, the people in Taiwan are super nice, though. When I was over there for three days, I'll, so I heard it's lovely. Super nice. Yeah. And they love. They were super into aviation. Super nice. Well, I I was there. Uh, and, you know, you just walk around and people are, yeah, I, I didn't have any issues at all with anybody there. So I, it was, it was, and it's a normal layover. I stayed in the same hotel as a K, there was a KLM crew that was there. So a bunch of people went out. So it was, yeah. It was I'm, I'm asking cause I've, I've never actually been over there. I've, I've never lot, been in Asia. I've got a lot of beefs with people in Taiwan, but they're all personal. It's no business stuff. Oh, gotcha. 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 Yeah. Or politics. It's just personal. Is beefs. that why the Kung, the Kung uh, Fu sticks here? Or, uh... Kung Fu sticks, huh? <laughs> Nunchucks, I believe are Japanese, <laughs> not Taiwanese or Chinese. They're not called the Kung Fu sticks anymore, huh? No, you at don't least say. Kung Fu is actually Chinese, so that makes that part of it makes sense. Well, they own they own Taiwan, right? So that that part makes sense yeah. as well. I've always wanted to go over there, but I've I've never been because um, I heard Japan's amazing as well. Japan's lovely, yeah. I mean, it's they're so organized, they're so clean, they're so honest, so fast and efficient. And and the thing that's really impresses me about the Japanese culture is that regardless of where you are. Uh, in as far as for your job, whether you're, you know, cleaning a floor or, you know, you're a surgeon, everyone tries to do their very, very best job with, with pride. And that's yeah. what's impressive. So there's a lot of pride that they take no matter where they are. And, and, you know, you still see kids going to school with backpacks mm -hmm. by themselves. It's very safe, super clean. There's the, the weird thing is, is there's no trash cans anywhere in the street. So if you, it's a cultural thing. You take your trash home with you. So I, I usually go out when, you know, after I lay, um, I land somewhere, I'll go walk around and I'll have a bottle of water because mm -hmm. I'm just dehydrated from, you know, 14 mm. hours into the plane. <clears throat> and so I'll just go walk around and I finished drinking with bottled water and there was no trash cans anywhere. So I, I ended up talking to a friend of mine that was Japanese. I was like, I couldn't find a trash can. He's like, yeah, no, culturally uh, you take your trash home but there's no trash in the streets anywhere. Wow. Here there's trash cans every 10 feet and people just throw it on the ground. It's like oh, yeah. there's a trash can right there. So. In San Francisco, you can piss and shit in the streets. So Literally, yeah. yeah. They got an app for it. Yeah. A map. Yeah, yeah, of, yeah. Well, yeah. what? Of the yeah. best places. No, no, of just where it is, like yeah. live. Uh -huh. It's like a poop app. Yeah, it's, it's like, a poop app. There's, uh, there's like four poops on 4th fourth and, fourth and Main. That yeah. doesn't exist. Yes, I mean, yes it, it does. It's ways for shit. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, yes. it's a thing. Are you fucking kidding me? No, that's no. California now, my man. man. God that's California. It. You got to get that app. I got to look it up. Yeah. Even though we're not going to San Francisco anytime soon, no. wouldn't it be nice to know how many people are shit in the streets? Yeah, like I mean, on Hate Nashbury, it's like, just oh, for, there's 34 just, uh, shits. Just for data's sake, yeah. The app is called Snapcrap. Oh, see? Yeah. Snap crap. Oh, and it lets you great. take pictures of poop on the sidewalks and report it. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Do we, are we allowed to show the pictures of it? I mean, it's just, it's just poop. Probably not, right? Uh, 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. This is why we don't have any YouTube subscribers. It could be. Yeah. Usually poop is not a huge thing that people want. Well, it's on, a huge, on YouTube. <laughs> it's it, a fetish though. In Germany. It is. Yeah. Yeah. In Germany yeah. it is. It's huge in Germany. Scat porn Just is like David, massive over there. David Hasselhoff. Scat porn. And, and shit. Yeah. Mostly. <laughs> two, two poops, one street. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Know, there's some options. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of options out there. Do you remember ratemypoo.com? Oh, yeah. It oh, was no. like hot or not, but for shits. Yeah. Mm. Hilarious. We had a. I yeah, know about that. Oh, you do no. for real? Rate my poo? No. Yeah, because we heard, I've heard pilots are disgusting, like behind the scenes. Hmm. Like hilariously disgusting, where they're just like, I, hey, I, I mean, this. there's. It's funny because there's a, a dark sense of humor that pilots have that, you know, there's a lot of people that are f afraid to fly, so you can't really show that dark side. But I, I was doing a flight uh, before I was an airline pilot. I used to fly corporate jets, private mm -hmm. jets, right? So you can be a little bit more lenient. And anyways, I was flying some people. We were on this corporate jet. I'm standing there. This guy's walking up the steps. He takes two steps up and he looks at me and he goes, you sure this thing's going to get back on the ground? I said, it's getting on the ground one way or another. And he was like, okay, good. What? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you should end every fucking, spe like every time you come over the intercom, like, all right, folks, you're going to fucking blah, blah, blah. Good luck. <laughs> and just yeah. like, hand the thing up and don't answer the phone anymore. Yeah, that's not how that would go. Yeah, you'd, no, be, huh? you'd do one flight of those. You'd get a bunch of reports. You'd be fired. But yeah. it's kind of like Southwest. They do those fun, flirty things. They where don't it's do, like, hey, we 50-50, we might make it. No, they don't. What know. they do is way worse. <laughs> but that's the flight. If, I, if somebody but, sings to me one more goddamn time. But that's the flight attendants. The pilots aren't on there like, hey, 50 50 50 chance we're making it yeah. in like there's a difference they let the flight attendants have the fun the pilots are still got to fly their plane right they there's a thing even where uh it's an old thing because obviously when back in the day you fly you would land on a field mm -hmm. and to this day pilots still call it field so there's even some training i remember having is saying don't say field because people think we're not going to an airport. We're landing in a field. Isn't we're like, Dallas Love uh, still called Dallas Love Field? It is, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, pilots say, hey, field in sight, or hey, do yeah, you got yeah, the field? Yeah, yeah. So, so that they, they don't call it an airport. So and it's a habit, and you get it from all the way through flight school, and pilots still say it. So that they, they say when, you, when you're an airline pilot, stop saying field. Like, hey, we're uh, 10 minutes out from the field. Why are we landing in a field? Like, it, it, I know it sounds stupid, but yeah. people. Well, people need uh, a little warning at the bottom of the McDonald's cup to let them know that coffee is hot. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. So now you know. You can't yeah. say field, airport. I just wonder. I, like, I've always pictured just inside the cockpit, it's just the worst shit ever being said to each other. Well, Do you usually know the guy? No. Oh, okay. So you, uh, well, I mean, it depends. So it, it, depending on the size of the airline, a lot of times you'll show up and it's you and three guys that you've never met or three people you've never met before. No shit. So, and then it's, but everything is very... A rigid like you're sitting in this seat these are your tasks you're in that seat these are your tasks you're back in this seat these are your tasks so it's very this it's very clear are you a chatty one it depends like some people like if i if i don't <laughs> like you then i'm i can be quiet and the thing is is if you're going across the ocean it's yeah, a long time. It's a yeah. long time. You're not talking to anybody. You got to yeah. have Audible going on, there. right? So Put your earplugs in. Yeah, are you allowed to do that? Listen to an audiobook? You're not supposed to listen to music. You can read your or read anything. You can read your company manuals. Mm -hmm. uh, that really wouldn't put. That you to sounds sleep. like CQ in the it, military. In like, the middle of the night, yeah, as you cross the ocean, read the company <laughs> manuals. Like, oh, I'm so awake. Uh, yeah, you, need to, you need to have your iPad up there watching a right. fucking movie. So I, I've heard I've heard stories of guys where they'll so. When the sun's in your face, we got these sunshades on the on for the like your car. Right? Yeah. So there's guys they'll just black out the flight deck, and then they'll just put an iPad up on the deck on the on the dash and yeah. just watch movies go across. With, oh, that's great. Yeah, because you can't do anything anyways. Like if, by the time you saw a plane, if you were in a head-on collision, no. if, you would see it on radar way before. You would that. see it on radar, and way air traffic controls that. there. Yeah. And if there was so, be something that would show up in your face at that speed, you're not yeah. gonna do anything anyways. not not if you're in the clouds especially right. you can yeah. see anything you're so, flying you're flying just with with uh instruments with, with instruments just right so, yeah. and then as you go across the ocean it's all super rigid you're uh, like you get given a specific speed mm. altitude and all this stuff and then off you go yeah well, I, what about the ones who like to talk over the microphone a lot like are you are you that guy or oh, do you know on, those guys on the pa system yes yeah. yes, yes. Oh, no i'm definitely not that guy okay. i'm very i'm talkative to the guy that i'm with uh when we're flying if you know, because sometimes you're just hanging out. It's just like five hours and you're just, 
getting along and you're having a good time, it's pretty cool, right? Yeah. Taking, um, taking shots. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Denzel Washington. It. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but the guys that do the, there's the guys that do the PAs and they'll, hey, we're taking off and then we're crossing over Jacksonville. Then we're going to yeah. go over New Orleans. I don't do that. Uh, if you look out uh, of the right side of the aircraft, uh, yeah. you'll notice that we're <laughs> going towards the earth right now and I can't control it. The, there's See a, in hell, I've only a few just... times that I've said, hey, look out. Like I saw, what was it? The Google balloon? Have you seen that Google mm. balloon? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I saw one of those. I heard, I heard air traffic control say something to somebody about it, and then we were flying, and then I saw it, and the right side of the aircraft could see it as we were coming up. I said, uh, you know, from the front flight deck, hey, on the right, for those of you on the right side of the plane, in about two minutes, uh, you're going to see uh, the Google balloon. So just, like, look out, look out the right side. And, you know, I was like, and if you're on the left side of the plane, you got... Um, a field. Like, yeah, you, you got, got nothing. nothing. You got nothing. You got nothing so, yeah. They should do like a whole season of Impractical Jokers only on commercial airlines. Oof. I don't know. I, not anymore. Like today, mm. flying has become... It's very serious now. Y- yes. The, the, the sense of humor is gone. Gone. Gone, yeah. My, my aunt was a flight attendant from like the 70s, 80s, and 90s when it was like, that was really fun. It was just a, uh, people were way more relaxed. When Jackie Brown was smuggling cocaine back from Mexico, yes, brother. Yes, right. dude. Those girls used to party, too. Yeah. yeah my, my aunt told me that when she'd land in L.A., you know, obviously at that time, flight attendants were, uh, I should show you a picture of what she looked like when she graduated, but they had the, like the real high oh, yeah. little skirt, yeah. knee high boots, yeah. and they did nail checks and weight checks. It was stressful. But she said they would land like in L.A. and the, the hotel they'd go to that movie stars and athletes like the Lakers would hang out in the lobby of the hotel knowing, hey, the flight crews are coming in at this time. And then they would try to chat them up and try to take them out on dates that night in L.A. Like yeah. that was like how it used to be in the 70s and 80s. Well, Damn it. I yeah. don't even wish it was that way uh, now. I really missed my window. I mean, then Free flying dinner. cargo would suck, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. I now, mean, now being a pilot, everybody just hates you. Like you're the motherfucker that made my because now yeah. everybody associates pilots with commercial air travel, which sucks now. Right. right. Yeah. It, but being a pilot in the U.S. is different when people find you're a pilot in other places. Like, oh, yeah, for sure. You, yeah. you know, you're in Japan and you're a pilot. And it's very well respected versus here, not so much. Shit, it's even. weird though. It switched and it, yeah. it switched during like a, a certain time frame. Cause you go back to like, catch me if you, if you can. When pilots walk through the airport with the stewardesses and everything else. It was like, Oh shit. That's a fucking pilot, dude. That's a big deal. That's legit. Right? Now you look at it like, yeah, cause like there were Dan seven said. of them back then. Right, yeah. But, but like you said, now you look at it and you're like, that motherfucker's late, dude. <laughs> He's not, he's not even walking fast. No, yeah. no. He's not even, even trying. Yeah. He's not even trying. Yeah. I get people walk up to me all the time like I'm in uniform. They're like, hey, do you know anything about I'm like, uh, I don't, I don't, I, how would I know? Like, we're in <laughs> Chicago O'Hare. I don't know where the flight to Jacksonville goes. Like, I don't, you got the know. entire internet in your hand right yeah. now, brother. So just say A17 all yeah. the time. Yep, A17. There you go, sir. There yeah. you go. It, Enjoy it. It's tough. I'm as tough as a, as a crew member. And obviously, for the flight attendants, when, when we would be delayed, when I flew passengers all the time before, I, went over to cargo mm. when we'd be delayed i would always stand you know when you you know when you walk in the plane and so the left is the flight deck mm. i would stand in that doorway and just talk with that flight attendant that was up there because if i was there people would not be nearly as lippy if i'm in if i'm sitting on the flight deck and it's just a flight attendant mm-hmm. you guys would get on and be like just hey we've been delayed how long is this gonna be but if you're standing there they don't give you the lip like they do the flight attendant so i'm not sure why people think it's it's okay to just smart off to them but when i was there they didn't do that they just look at me and they go, okay. Like pilots should have fucking Uzis, bro. Well, they oh have, yeah, yeah, yeah. They have, Seriously, they have the um, FFDO program. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. about that? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But it's not Uzis. No, it's. Uh, MP, Uzis. I think it's an MP7 actually now. If I'm not mistaken, a Glock and an MP7. Yeah, yeah. Glock. yeah but an yeah. Uzi would be sweet though, wouldn't it? it? Would, well, the military aircraft, it's a Glock and an MP7, right? Well, yeah. is that right? When I do military charters, when we're doing military planes, everybody's got their yeah their yeah. weapon. So it was weird. The, one of the first military charters I did. Um, it, you know, they land, they get off the plane, and and uh, and it was just a stopover. You know, every few, few hours they got to stop and get off the plane. It's I don't know the military rules. So uh, we were doing a briefing. I sat down up in the first class area. We did the briefing with the whole crew. I sat down and kicked something. I looked down. And it's an M16 sitting on the ground. I'm like, hmm, that's different. Like, yeah. not norm, not what you know. I was flying passengers only for a normal airline before that. That's not normally what you kicked down it's there. It's a safe flight. Yeah, very safe. Right. Yeah, no one's. It, well, and that's actually not true because they're a bunch of drunk knuckleheads, and they all have uh, steel core fucking ammo and not frangible rounds, right? So it's not the safest thing of all time. Ah, but fine. it's safer than a. No, it's probably not safe. Actually, <laughs> now that I think about it, I'm thinking about myself on an aircraft with an M4 walking around. That's probably not safe. Yeah, so. but you're not going to have unless all those guys turn on you. 
they're, they're not going to breach the flight deck and do something. No. no. So that's what I mean. Like, yeah. the, I mean, how big of a hole would have to happen for that to be a real problem? You know what I mean? A hole on the inside of the plane? Yeah, like yeah, if you yeah, fired yeah. a round, a 5.56 five, round through the side of the plane, how big does that hole have to be for it to start becoming a real problem? Pretty big. Like, yeah. if you, like, like even for a parachute, we're, we're taught to jump, like clear the aircraft, get out of the plane, right? Count to four, then look up, and you're, you're trying to make sure that your risers are straight, and you're also looking for a hole in the parachute that's bigger than your head. If it's not bigger than your head, you ignore it. Okay. So it's got to, for a plane, it's got to be way bigger it's than It's got to be much right? bigger, yeah. So you always see in the movies, like, the guy shoots off a round, and then it just blows open this oh, yeah. massive yeah. hole. And it's, it's, <laughs> the planes are always being pressurized. There's, right. These things are not balloons. There's, there's yeah. air leaking all the time, mm -hmm. so the plane's continually being pressurized. And so people think one little thing is just going to just rip the hole open, right? So there was the Southwest where the engine had that uncontained failure right. and that shot part of the metal into the plane and that ripped a pretty big hole. Mm -hmm. But even that didn't just like rip the whole side of the plane off. Right. right and that now. was a pretty decently si yeah. sized hole. Is there, is there a procedure for closing the hole or do you just go mask up and just get everybody on the ground? Yeah, no. Once you'd have a rapid depressurization. So mm. you just put your mask on and then get to 10,000 feet as quickly yeah, as yeah. you can. And then that way. It, then figure it out from there probably. Yeah. And then it's just go to land somewhere. Yeah. yeah. yeah so. Have you ever had a shitty landing and the people tell you about it that are on the flight? <laughs> So nice job, <laughs> asshole. As they're walking by. Yeah. I, I've had some hard landings before, of course. Uh, well, if you hit a thermal pocket 15, 30 feet from the ground or some shit, yeah, right? Yeah, I kind mean, of fucked. That, do you, how do you even, there's nothing you can do about something. Yeah, of this I mean, you can be, I mean, there, there's things you can do, but yeah, you're, you, you, just like anything, you got to have some mistakes. Otherwise, yeah. you're never going to learn, right? So um, I've had some hard landings, and typically you'll, you'll notice if someone has a really hard landing, the flight deck door doesn't open. So, so normally when it's a smooth landing, you'll see the captain or the pilot up there like, hey, you know. Yeah. But yeah, like, oh, have a good day, you know, because they're looking for that validation, right? Sure. Because, you know, <clears throat> low egos. So, uh, the, but if you really slam it in, like, you just want to let everybody get off the plane. And then the flight attendants will say, like, Mm. Hey, bro. Yeah. The reason get your shit together. Yeah. The so, reason I asked about that is to address the gun thing, especially, is to address some of the stupid assumptions people have about what could happen in an emergency situation on an airplane. And the reason I am, I'm curious about that is because that's your most watched video, the one you referenced before about you're talking shit about TikTokers, right? Right. Yeah. With these, uh, I mean, the movie scenario things are really interesting, but the, I think the one that I'm looking at here now is dumb advice. Terrible advice. Said. Yeah. So yeah. give me some examples of the terrible advice. So, so the, the first one, it starts off with this girl saying, okay, so the plane's going to land and the advice that the airlines give you is actually going to kill you. So don't, which is like, you know, bend over and put your hands on the seats and all that. Don't do that. She said, put your feet on the seat, put your head up in the air, and then just hold yourself there for the crash. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I wonder what she squats. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Less than the 2,500 foot pounds of pressure that happens in a car wreck. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Right. So I don't know how much it gets created in a, in a 45 mile per hour car wreck. It's about 2,100 pounds, I think. Of pressure, yeah, right. Like that, you. So people are like, put your feet on the dash, man. Yeah, if you want your femurs to break off and stab you in the face, that's a really good plan. Which is <laughs> what I said to there. Like your your, your teeth are just all that's going to happen is your face is going to smash into your knees. Yeah, you're, you're going to be dead. eating all yeah. your teeth. That's all that's going to happen. So I mean, that it, that it would cave your fucking whole head in. Right. Like this. But no. what's funny is then then there was an, another girl, another lady after that that said the same thing. Like, look at this girl's video. She does a really good job explaining stuff. And then she goes on to say a bunch of other more stupid stuff about like, it's not even built for a car accident. It's not safe enough for a car crash or something. You know, it's just like, what? What does this have to do with anything? And, and since that video came out, what I realized <laughs> is, is that video, the, the, the first one had so many views that other TikTokers were seeing it and then just regurgitating it, not mm. even doing any of their own homework on it. They would just, I, I got sent now, and because of that video did so well, so many people sent me other people who've done the exact same, hey, don't do this, do this, do this, do this, all the same stuff that she said. And I thought, wow, these guys don't even bother to even, like you could just literally type it in to Google and it will tell you, but they don't even do that research. Well, I look, I mean, there are, everybody on TikTok is a physicist and an engineer. Right. Yeah. We all know that. Right. So just trust the science. Yeah, I mean, look, 6.4 million views on that one video right. alone. Did any of the people who you were making fun of hit you up and say, fuck no. you? No. Really? Yeah. No, That's because hilarious. when you when you fucking dunk on somebody, yeah. I mean, unless you're Conor McGregor sitting on the floor with a fucking with your leg broken off, you yeah. usually don't talk shit upward. 
That's yeah. what I mean. It, it, and the thing is, is it had so many views that what, what ended up happening is people were going into their TikToks and other posts going like, you just got roasted. Like, mm. and then, yeah. So it was kind of like, I, I, and what I'm surprised with is that n n they didn't take it down because they're still getting money by people finding oh, yeah. that sure. to <clears throat> talk trap. But they, they're like, well, I'm still making money on it. So they're just going to let it go. Yeah. Who cares? But who cares about this misinformation that I'm putting out? Like, no big deal. Yeah. So. That's funny. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you, because I know it's in one of these videos, the Denzel Washington thing in the movie. Flight, yeah. That's impossible, right? He can't, you can't barrel roll one of those things. Well, you know, so there was uh, a few years ago, maybe about three years ago, that Q400 out of Seattle that got stolen. Oh, you're oh. talking about Bebo. That's my boy, dude. Yeah. So I didn't know that you could take a Q400 and do that, right? Yeah. No. Who would? Well, first of all, through Christ, all things are possible. Yes. <laughs> yes. Go ahead and jot and, that and down. according to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yeah. Also. Um, yeah. You can do. Yeah. You can do anything. Anything. As well. So we, we had a T-shirt for Bebo Russell. When I saw yeah. that, when I saw that starting, I was like, "There's no way," and he got it all the way back around. I thought. Wow. Like, and I'm sure Bombardier, who makes the queue, mm. was like, hmm, we didn't know. Like, yeah, yeah, Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure they took the black box and got all the, you know, the, the flight data recorded and all that information. So they'd have access to all that to see G loads and all that stuff. They would have been mm. able to see all that stuff. So, um, yeah. So if you had said, is it possible? Yeah, I think it's probably possible. There, that movie has some ties to an Alaskan flight that happened in the 90s, I think, where they, that, the, the horizontal stabilizer got, got stuck mm -hmm. and they did invert. They were just trying to come up with solutions. So some say they didn't do it on purpose. Some say they <laughs> did do it on purpose, but they were just trying to come up with a way to... Well, either way, the aircraft was capable of doing it. Yeah. So to, I mean, that particular plane in real life ended up crashing and, and killing everybody, but right. there they were able to roll it. So is it possible? I, I guess it's possible. Like, I don't want to say no, because I'm not a, you know, aeronautical engineer, but... Don't you want to try it just once like Bebo did? Because, like, you, it, you actually know how to land. He got up there and was just like, ah, shit, I don't know how to land this He thing. probably could have done it. I mean, it, all the stuff that he was doing, it, it's not... He would have been if he wanted to Go survive ahead and say that. It. It's not that hard to fly a plane. Say it out loud <laughs> say right it, now. Say it right now. Let's do it. So <laughs> if he wanted to land, he could have landed that. If he got that far, he could have landed that and lived. It maybe wouldn't have been a good landing. Maybe it would have gone off the end of the airport or something like that. But mm -hmm. he could have, I think, based off of all the other stuff that he was doing, I think he probably could have made it. Okay. That's my guess. What about that dude, that Navy dude that drew a dick? What, what's going on in the Pacific Northwest yeah, in planes, man? Yeah. People can't calm down. Have I you think ever it's had the, the Pacific Northwest, dude? Just living there. You lose your fucking mind. Yeah, all the rain. clouds. Yeah. Antifa, yeah. all of it. All the clouds all the all the time. Yes. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Now, now if that if that Navy pilot had said, Oh, I didn't even realize I was just doing a pattern and I wasn't but I'm sure he probably cop to it you know the integrity thing I'm, but if he had said like i didn't even realize that was happening i, I didn't he, know i couldn't do that that's what he should have said no he yeah. no that's not what he should have said he should have said i didn't even realize that that's how i was coming out i was just doing a figure eight pattern <laughs> yeah. and then i was just doing a, i didn't even realize oh my god oh what that's no. crazy like that's had it here's, and ball. Had, here's the here's had that happen that doesn't even happen. Here's the problem. I know those guys. Well, I do too. And they've been drawing dicks on everything around them for 25 fucking years now. Right. You can't fuck it. There's well, no. I, I, I out joke of that. that pilots are like children, right? Oh. We, 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 it is what it is. But I'm just saying, if they had said, I didn't even realize that's what was coming out, I was just literally doing a figure eight pattern, how, how would they prove that that was not the case? Tom Cruise has been a pilot. For 40 fucking years now. Oh, yeah. And he buzzes the tower all the time. He's still fine. He's fine. Why can't you draw mm -hmm. a dick in the sky? Why can't you draw? You can. It's just frowned upon. So, like, Why? he did it. He did it and it's frowned upon, you know? Right. Well, because then you got to explain, you know, people on the ground and say, oh, dad, what's that up in the air? Well, that's a penis and balls, son. Who did that? Our United States military. <laughs> You're welcome. You know, yeah. But that's how that sentence uh, that's how that sentence ends. You're welcome. <laughs> dot 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 you're welcome. That should be the new recruiting commercial. Yeah. But had you imagine, had that guy gone in there and said, I had no idea that's what it actually looked like. I was just doing a maneuver. If he stuck to it, he would have to stick to it. But they, would he be able to get out of that? They'd be like, hey, be more aware of what's going on. But he could have got away. Here's with the that. problem though, as an as a military officer, you can be called back into active service for your entire life, I think. I'm pretty sure that's the case. For your entire life? Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize yeah. that. Yeah. Not as a non-commissioned officer or, or an enlisted person, but as an officer, uh, you could be recommissioned. Okay. Like at a time of war or something. Right. And this is America, so it's we're always at war. <laughs> so <laughs> it's kind of like the thing with uh, naval vessels. American-bound or uh, American-based naval vessels have to have American crews and have an American flag running on it, right? Right. In case they can get commissioned into the fucking war effort anytime. Right. Same kind okay. of deal. 
But what does that have to do with denying that you understood what was going because on? Because he'd have to deny it for the rest of his goddamn life, yes. man. He wouldn't get the movie. Yes. He wouldn't get the books. Fuck Nothing. that shit. Okay. You want the glory, dude. Or you just, Kelsey want the fucking glory, you just brother. Wait, you just wait for somebody to, like Trump to get elected and get a pardon because he would think that's funny and he would think it's hilarious. Uh, yeah. Who is that? Uh, who is that? Oh, it's the dick guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pardon him. That's great. He's a great guy. Great guy. Love his dicks. Big fan of his dicks. Tremendous dicks. Yes. Best dicks I've ever seen in the sky. Um, like that, you know. Right. Yeah, that's fair. Well worth it. Yeah. You're good to go. Yeah. I'm just saying have a fucking game plan. That's it. Yeah. Right. Hope, hope is not a game plan. No. <laughs> hope is something well, I'll born with. Uh, sex in the sky. Mile high club. Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Try five miles high. 30 Rock. Nailed it. Oh, yeah. That, no, that was well done. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Um, Matt Damon. <laughs> so uh, what's your question exactly? Well, I don't see a ring on your finger. That's yeah, correct. Was no, that the no. sex tape? Yeah, so that you, can, you, can, you can say. Right. So is it possible that it happens? Is that what you're asking me? Uh, for Yes, for you in particular. Yeah, <laughs> on, the, on the flight deck or as a passenger? Uh, either. either or is fine. I, I think on the flight deck would probably be easier. You've got access to the cargo area and shit like that, right? I, uh, from from the films I've seen, okay, right, <laughs> and from it's always sunny in Philadelphia, who I'm so, quoting right now. <laughs> so you think that from the flight deck we can just drop down into where oh, the passengers are? Oh no 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 no! Are? You go into the back right, and then there you can go down to the cargo area in most aircraft, right? No, no, no you where, can't. Where the back passenger fifty seven? Yeah, that's I made it. I mean, I made the movie. You can watch it. No, <laughs> so on passenger fifty seven on that plane, it had a place to go down. There was a galley that it, that that, that like did underneath exist. the flight deck. It was in on the, it was in the main body of the aircraft. There was a galley under there. That, yeah, that, is, that, that, is that a real thing? That, that was a real thing. There no, was, I mean, like in an aircraft, is that a real thing? On that plane, that type of plane, yes, that's oh, a real word. on that specific plane. Hmm. But on your typical, like you know, you're flying Southwest tomorrow. The hmm. pilots can't go to the bathroom and then like hit a button and it drops them into where all your what bags are. What about in the back? In the back, like there's no access to the cargo area from inside the fuselage of Correct, the aircraft. Correct, because that's where if you had that, then you. You know, people, when they transport weapons and stuff, mm. that's where it goes. Right. That's because no one can get there. Mm. Oh, right. all right. All right. And, and, and there's parts of that area that, are depress that aren't pressurized. So what if, there's a, sure. what, if, what if there's a fire down there? How do you put it out? There's, the fire, a, there's a fire suppression system. I get it. But what if that doesn't work? What if it fails? You just die? Well, I need access, so, motherfucker, yeah. Yeah. all the time. You're going to yes. go fight the fire? Yeah, yeah. I'll punch it right in the fucking right face. Right in the face. I've seen Dan punch a fire I've right in the face. I've quite a bit of fire. So there's a fire suppression system. You hit it, right? Yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. so you hit that, and then you have a time limit. Maybe Is it dry chemicals? Do you know what they it, use? Yeah, it's like a halon. Yeah, halon. So there, there's, it depends. Every plane is different. Some have like a hard burst that comes out in like yeah, yeah. one minute, and then 60 minutes of suppression. Yeah, yeah. And then so you have a time limit to get on the ground. Because you couldn't use some of those, uh, not the halon system. What's the one that sucks all the oxygen out? You couldn't use that because it's... In a, a, back in a pressurized cabin, right? So right. It, it depends. Like on, some, like on the flight deck on some aircraft, like a cargo aircraft, you, they have a, some scenarios where you could depressurize if you had a thermal runaway. Because we transport oh, word, yeah. stuff that that wouldn't go on a passenger aircraft, like, like batteries, a, batteries, lithium. Yeah, batteries like like, a, like that, I've yeah. taken like a imagine a seven forty seven full to the roof of like brand new yeah, iPhones. Yeah, yeah. So if that ran away. You're, yeah, you're fucked. Yeah, yeah, you can depressurize all you want, but you, mm. yeah, that, you, yeah, you got a DB Cooper. That bitch. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, depressurize and jump. Yeah. You gotta, you yeah. gotta hop out of that. So where did you bone then? Is what we're asking. So yeah, where in the aircraft were you fucking? Was it in the cockpit? Was it in the bathroom? Was it? So so you're asking. So if the it, bathroom is too small, bro. Well, it depends. Depends. So depends on your aircraft. Yes. If you're on a wide body aircraft, yeah. and I'm not, I'm not. Uh, Saying that this is something anybody should do for the record. Give me a Obviously. list of I'm give me a list of wide body aircrafts and which airlines have them. <laughs> <laughs> so a wide body aircraft is going to be an aircraft when you get on and there's two aisles. Okay, that's yeah. the easiest way to know. Okay. So you you know your A330, your Boeing 787, the Delta International flights, anything that's yeah. international. Or yeah. right now you have a lot of domestic flights that are going. Are they just using those planes for just because because, because they, they they're not planes. doing a lot of yeah. the international flights. The, the the amount of flights over to Europe or South America, or whatever, are restricted and so. There, and there's a, a huge demand. So you're flying yeah, yeah. a 777 from um, mm. Dallas to Miami, which I just did recently. So on something like that, mm. the bathrooms are bigger, uh, especially as you get further forward in the cabin. Cool. So you get into business class, it's a bigger bathroom. So that would be more spacious. If you go into a smaller plane, small bathroom, you're going to be... So is that where you off. were? Is that where you, you were in the bathroom? Mm. It wasn't in the cockpit? I, I'm saying hypothetically, if you were to do it, that would be a better place to 
than the cockpit. Correct, because then if I were to do it in the cockpit, then I would lose my licenses. Well, well oh, only if somebody fucking. I mean, well, somebody found. Maybe you've got a, well, a female I mean, first officer, and correct. you guys know each other. Like, hey, you know what? I'm not saying that it's never happened. This what, is a long ass flight. Yeah. I, I personally have never done that, but I'm saying it. You also got to remember everything's being recorded up there. Can, there's cameras Isn't in the really? cockpit. There are not cameras, but there's an audio that's being recorded uh, at all times. So be real quiet. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just just keep it down, lady. <laughs> so you, it, so you'd have to. It would have to be a. It couldn't be like okay, we're starting the first ten hour flight together. We never met, and then over the ocean we planned this thing, and then we all of that happens because that would all, I mean, unless you started off with writing it out and you guys were just writing notes back and forth. But isn't that the excitement of it? Like that's it how could, you get down of like, Hey, but imagine, do you want to do this? Imagine. So you got to like plan that out. Right? So you're, you're on a 10 hour flight and you write her a note. Like you interested in this? Yeah. And, um, then, and, she's, beauty, and she's like, question mark. She's What's like, that from anybody? Backdoor beauty. No. Fear and loathing in Las Vegas. Oh, right? oh boy. Terrible. So yeah. you write that note hour yeah. one. She's like, gross. Now you got nine more hours, so now it's going to be... Yeah, that's one try per hour for nine more hours. Yeah. You're going to hit on one of those. One of those Even is if you've only out. got a 10% success rate, you're going to fuck her before that flight lands. I agree. I question that logic, but... Yeah, that <laughs> math is sound. <laughs> <laughs> that one divided by 10 is 10%. And, and then you land, yeah. and she goes... Uh, uh, email goes sent off to HR. Uh, who said she was getting out of there? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just wow, saying, this getting, scenario is super this is, oh, dark. This is getting real dark. I had heard get real dark towards the end of these shows. Sometimes we ended on like the darkest note ever. And I had just heard like, that yeah. pilots had a dark sense of humor. They do. They do. And yeah. now, I'm, now I'm not <laughs> reaping any of the benefits from that. Well, if you get up on the flight deck one day, then, then you'll get to see that. I would never be allowed up there. Look at me. I looked like I just stormed the Capitol, for Christ's sake. Yeah, he was, he was looking through Pelosi's laptop with a <laughs> Viking helmet on about six months ago. So... Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you were in the bathroom. I, yeah. I'm saying if you if you were to do that, then the, a better option would be in the bathroom. Or uh, uh, there was a flight where they recorded it, where they just sat in the back row, and she just went to town on the guy, and people just recorded it. And I think they got put on. The oh, note. I saw that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so that was on the a. No, get fired, but the no fly list. That's a little extreme. I don't that's know that they lot. got put on that, but I'm guessing, the, or at least a no fly list for that particular airline. Right, you can yeah. get put I'm on a no fly. Fine with that. Right? Yeah. So I don't. I think they knew because it was daytime, in a small plane, and they weren't like trying to hide it. There's a lot yeah. of where people try to hanky panky hide it. Like, can we get some blankets? And we got a whole row, and you're just trying to, you know. I mean, if you just hit it big yeah. on AMC stocks. Yep. Right. You're a billionaire now, but yeah. you're still a pilot, and your fucking girlfriend's a flight attendant. Fuck on the back of that plane, right? Yep. In broad goddamn daylight, and yeah, say like, yeah, yeah. hey, hey. Got an announcement. Uh, we're going to be just talk like that pilot voice. Just talk like that the whole time you're banging her. Yeah. Let everybody oh. record it. Let that sex tape go out. Now you can start your fucking TikTok career, bro. Yeah. Mm. With that billion dollars you just made from AMC. You got to have those long pauses in there. Uh, uh, well, uh, towards the right. It's going to be about half so, my balls. So you're talking about getting all the way back into like the galley area because that's you need to you need the phone to make the announcement. So well, I would in. have a third. You need the phone. Person, the flight yeah, attendant. Yeah, yeah. And then she would join after, I guess. I yeah, know. you know. In this scenario that you're saying, fuck the world, right? You may as well get weird with it. But the, mm. yeah, yeah, because the, the crazy ones, man, that, like, it used to be back in the day, the crazy oh, stews. There, there, there's some stories, there's some accidents where the pilot, the captain was in the coat closet <laughs> going crazy. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's what really I mean. Funny. Th that type of stuff happened. Uh, but now, if you were to do that, you would lose your license. It used to be cigs inside too. You know, you could smoke on the plane. Correct. Yeah. Oh, that there's was, still that's, there's still ashtrays on my. There's plane. still ashtrays yeah. on the plane. On, that's on, really on my weird. flight deck. There's ashtrays on the 747. Not the newer ones that came out, but the. Isn't that kind of weird that that was ever a thing? Like I understand yeah. that smoking was seen differently back then. Yeah. But just filling a tube in the air with smoke seems yeah. like not it, the best <laughs> idea. <laughs> well, they had sections, so it was all sectioned off. <laughs> yeah. Man, the, it was the little long. curtain <laughs> blocks the, the fucking smoke. Yeah. But you know, in the flight deck, that's not a lot of space in there. There's in I there know. just. Chugging and, away. And the air is yeah. constantly circulating through, so I guess if you're in the front, maybe you don't smell it. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's everywhere. You're living in that. They still have that in Asia. There's, I had a buddy who was flying in China, and they would just smoke on the flight deck in China. I mean, if really? you're a communist party person, nobody in China is telling you what to do. Yeah. It doesn't matter. What, if you're a powerful business person or a member of the communist party, yeah. they, they, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. Which would be kind of dope. Maybe we should start it here. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see how things go. Okay. Um, <laughs> 
it, Kelsey, you never know. You never, anything could happen. No, I'm, but yeah, that, that flight deck, it's small. So if you're up there smoking, not, yeah. not comfortable. Yeah. No, I get it. I mean, I get it. You, are you still married now? No, I'm single. You're no. single now. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. So cool. I was, I was never married. So, oh, it was your buddy who got married from that one bad flight, uh, from the private, when he was flying the girl for a date. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, that yeah, was the guy yeah. I was sitting next to on a plane. Oh, got it, got yeah, it, Yeah, yeah, You don't even know this guy. I yeah. thought that guy was you. No, he could, oh. you were like, that guy. And I was oh. like, oh, okay, you're the guy. You're the guy. Yeah, no, no, wow. yeah, no, I, no, he's, that guy's been married 25 years. No, that. So uh, you didn't, you don't even know him? Well, I did. I sat next to him on a plane. And he told me the whole story. <laughs> it's still a stranger, though, man. Yeah, so he could be what's dead. His, what's his be, government name? He could be dead now. R.I.P. Yeah. Okay. R.I.P. You don't know? Anything is possible. Just in case he's dead. Rest in peace out there. Brian David Wilson. Rest in peace, my man. Rest I don't think peace, that's his yeah. name. Brian Wilson was a pitcher for the He was also the in, the, in the Beach Boys. So, yeah. uh, you know, either way, uh, you're good to go. If you, if you were going to die, right, yeah. or you, you wanted to go out like that, uh, what's, the, what's the craziest thing you'd do on a flight? Would if, you play like the Stones, like something, you know, uh, or like Megadeth you're or something. You're about to have that two and a half like, minute free fall. What's your fucking... What's well, so, you, you, so you're yeah. saying where it's like... Because see, here's the thing. Like You're going to know before they're going to know. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is that as a pilot, you, I think it's just ingrained in you that you, you, you're always going to fight to the end, right? Mm-hmm. You, you're always going to think, ah, it's going to work out, right? So in the scenario that your wings have come off... Wings are off. Yeah. The fuselage is dislodged from the flight deck. You're hurtling towards the fucking earth. What yeah. yeah. Do? Now, now. There's um, no options left. Yeah. What I do you think, do, Kelsey? I, I think your main option would be to just get your way, get yourself away from the plane. Yeah. Right. And then go for like the free fall and then try to get over to some trees and then just try to try to, what, yeah. what happens if your chute doesn't open? That'd be like your best bet, right? Get to some trees. You don't want your chute to open over trees. But if you don't have a chute, what I'm saying, your best bet would be aim towards some trees to get your feet to go feet first through some trees. Maybe, yeah. That's better than hitting a field. I mean, water would probably be better. No, water? No. If you can break the surface tension of the water, it's better. No. Then I mean, you you still have to get all your gear off. Well, no, trees trees are good. You're saying I'm a pilot. You're talking about you're jumping out. I'm saying as a pilot, I'm now just my pilot uniform shirt, and now I've been thrust out into oh without a parachute is what you're correct saying. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, 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 yeah. you guys don't have yeah, parachutes yeah. up there no why why w- when that, everybody should have a fucking why i would demand this, it we have a friend richard ryan he always flies yeah, with a does, parachute yeah, wouldn't does. that be creepy if you just saw your pilots like running back with i mean why I, aren't the chairs just fucking parachutes man? like with ejection seats yes, yes. Yeah, that'd be expensive. That'd be dope as fuck. Who cares? But like, n- that's necessary. I need exhibit to show up. I want to put some motherfucking ejection yeah, seats exactly, on your airplane. Um, your flight wouldn't be $90. I, I don't ju- give a fuck how and, much it costs. And, and keep in mind, now, if you did that, now you all these people eject from this plane. Where's that aircraft? That aircraft's going somewhere. Yeah, you just... See you later. That's not my fucking problem. <laughs> not my that's problem. That's a naga 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 na. Not my problem here. Yeah, so okay. who cares? Not at all concerned about the fallout from my incompetence. Okay. No, not at all, dude. Save yourself. Okay. Save yeah. yourself, no, Kelsey. No, no, <laughs> no parachutes. And and yeah. So I guess I would push myself away from the plane and aim for some trees. Definitely but, trees if you don't have a parachute. Yeah. But you're fucked either way. You may as well yeah. find a tree and try to let it impale you or something. But if you went feet first, you'd have a chance. <laughs> I'd try to tackle somebody. Yeah. Like and I'm, use them, I'm use free them? falling and then, no, fuck, I'm not going to live. Well, well you don't think you could flip over and get on top of them and then land on their, their yeah, body? Like if you oh, throw like their, 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 their wrestling move where you put your angles around their head and flip them over? Correct. Yeah. yeah. And just yeah. land or, softly or, on them. Or you just use them as like your shield as you hit. You just let them take the initial yeah, the, the and then, blow. And then you go right behind them. Maybe. I don't I know. Saw, I saw I that just, in the movie. Once. I did I was, too. Yeah. yeah. I was just thinking that it would be cool to fucking somebody just going about their day and all of a sudden a human being slams into them and they're just both grape jelly on the fucking sidewalk and nobody knows what happened. Yeah. That would be hilarious. I'm that, sure it has happened. That is what happened with the Ukrainian flight that mm. got shot out of the air, the one that was going, or the Malaysian flight, I'm sorry, yeah. that got shot out of the air over Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, the body, that, but was exploded by a missile in midair. Right. The bodies, like at least one body fell just through somebody's ceiling. It landed in their kitchen, like on their kitchen table. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the rest of them just sprinkled through a field and like over a town and stuff this like that. This is what I... I and, and, and I feel so bad for those pilots because obviously you know, anytime there's a plane crash, it's always like the pilot's fault, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And, and as a pilot, you never want to die, obviously, when you're flying. But in that scenario, 
Who, yeah, you got who, missled. Who see? Yeah, you know, you know, you don't, you don't nothing you can do. You don't even see that coming, right? Yeah, <laughs> you, you don't guys see, literally. You don't, you don't have countermeasures in the back the, of your the, commercial aircraft. Aral has that. Aral has that. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> no shit. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Look at Christ. That. So they got some. They got some stuff for sure. <laughs> Damn, it's pretty it. cool. I'd say what, Kelsey? This has been enjoyable shit today. Yeah. Thanks, I really man. enjoyed I, it. I, thanks for having me down. Yeah, yeah this is one of the. This is a point in the show we get to the drinking bro of the week, which is someone who has inspired you or helped you become the person you are today, who would you like to give that to? Mm. What was that girl's name on that flight? Okay, let me think here. Who's inspired Full me? name, middle yeah. name included. <laughs> Sully Sullenberg. Yes. Um, I, my uncle, my uncle was a, was a, brothers. Was a pilot. Uh, he was a pilot and mechanic, and he, he uh, when I decided to, to go, because he was an engineer, real crazy smart, mm -hmm. and uh, when I decided to be a pilot, I only knew him. He was the only pilot that I knew and he was, I, I'm not a very smart guy, so I was talking to him about it, and I said, I don't know if I'm smart enough. He's like, yeah, you could do it. Now I'm a pilot, I realize you don't really need to be that smart to, to be a pilot. He's, so. That's twice now he said that it's not really that hard to be a pilot. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's not. It's fucking easy. Yeah, I, I got, a, I got a, a series where I've taken people flying who, who aren't pilots. It's, it's not that hard. No, no, no. I've flown plane before. My, my old company commander had one. We used to fly back and forth from Fort Bragg to Myrtle Beach and shit like that. And it's, what kind of plane? Uh, I don't know, some fucking Cessna okay. of some sort. Did he was, let you fly and land it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, see, it's not that hard. Well, no. I never landed it, actually, but he took me through. I, like, I'm sta sitting at the stick, and he's showing me the process for landing. You punch in codes, and the airfield lights up, and you just fucking land on the right spot. I mean, it's not... Well... I mean, it's, you, you, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're measured in how you decrease your speed and altitude as you come in. Correct. There's, like, a way to do it, for sure. Yeah. But it's not, like, fucking rocket science. It's definitely it's, not. Yeah. No. If I can learn it, anybody can learn it. There's it, a skill to it. It's like it, there's a science to it and an art to it. Uh, there's an art for sure yeah. because especially if you land in the same airfields a lot or or whatever in the same type of weather environments, it probably is a bigger deal than anything, right? Right. I mean, you're dealing with everything. Like you got your calms and days, bullshit, and you yeah. got like I've landed in the start of a hurricane. So I mean, there's <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, if you're trying to land and there's a like a full value, what, what a sniper would call a full value, and or a crosswind coming across, that can't be easy to keep that fucking plane from. Right. Well, I, I got a whole series of they call it bio debrief where I mm -hmm. break down what they're doing and what they did right or what they did wrong. JFK so, Jr.? JFK Jr., that's a sad story. I know, it was, but what did he do wrong? Did you break that down? I, I haven't done that one. Um, flying to a storm? He just got, himself. yeah, so I mean, w part of it is when you're flying and you're not trained in flying in weather, hmm. y you get in the clouds and you can get disoriented, which, which, yep. seem, which seems weird. It seems weird that you'd get in a cloud and get disoriented, but that's what happened. He got in the cloud and got disoriented. Lose and then, the horizon, yeah. Yeah. I mean, but you, it's not weird, though, because I bet a lot of our audience has experienced this before just on a boat. If you go out on, like, a deep-sea fishing thing and you're not awake as you get out there and you can't see land anymore, you're, you walk back up onto the deck and you will immediately become disoriented because you can't see land. Like, you can mm. see the horizon, but the horizon is doing this the whole time. Yeah. Right? So if you don't gradually get used to that as you're getting away from land farther and farther... You, your brain gets fucked up. Your inner ear gets fucked up. It'll make you nauseous. You have, uh, you start getting really anxious and shit like that. It's not good. Yeah. So we got, we got instruments to show us, hey, this is, this is what's going on. But if you're not trained in that, which JFK Jr. wasn't, right. it's easy to just <clears throat> roll your plane upside down. Which I, don't, I mean, no one knows specifically because those small planes don't have a, a, all the technology mm -hmm. that an airliner has to mm -hmm. say exactly what happened. But that's what they suspect is he got into the weather, he was overly confident, which is like, it's better to be humble than overly confident when you're flying. So I, you're overly confident and into the weather and got upside down, I guess, ended up in the water. Yeah. So, yeah. I just wondered if you covered, you know, famous people and things like that. I haven't done that story. I, I mean, it's because a lot of it is assumption of what actually happened, right. Right? right? There's nothing to say, hey, this is a factual fact. It's like, we assume that it was this. And, you know, people with their loved ones or something like that, I try not to get into you know, I'll, I'll end it on a PG question. Then. Okay. Uh, favorite Wright brother, Orville or Wilbur? No, Redenbacher Ooh. is the third Wright brother. So I, I have a whole thing on my Instagram right? of, of fake, uh, fake pilots. Yeah. Yeah. People pretending to be me on Instagram sure. and, uh, and setting up dating profiles with my photos. Uh, and the, one of the most recent ones was Wilbur. Ah. I don't know if they were intending for that to be Wilbur Wright, but I'm sure. God, that's awesome. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. really genius if it is. You got to hit him up and say, hey, that's me. If, and congratulations. If he, if he was thinking that, kudos. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well yeah. done. <laughs> uh, tell everybody where they can find you. Obviously, your YouTube channel is massive. Yeah. Uh, do you promote Instagram and all that stuff? I, I got an Instagram, 74 Gear, same as my channel, same on Twitter. Uh, I try to put out some pictures or stories and from time to time, just when I'm out around the world. Uh, and then I do weekly videos. On, awesome. On well, YouTube. shit, you're great at podcasting. Mm -hmm. um, I'm surprised you don't have a podcast. Yeah, it's it's very time consuming. I got a full time job flying planes, mm -hmm. then making these videos. I, I don't have time, honestly, to 
do this. Sounds like you have nothing but time in the air, my man. You could go up there from, like, inside the, from the cockpit. That's the name of your show, and then boom. Ooh. Whoever you're with, you can just interview that fucking guy. Oh, yeah. I'm sure my airline would love to know that I'm doing, doing that in flight. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, Kelsey, it always sounds like you're flying. No, no, that's not me. Well, we have it on the voice recorder. Mm -mm. That's the thing. Then you don't have to hire an editor or anybody else. It's right. just like, hey, give me the tapes, dude. I've landed. <laughs> I, I've got a podcast. Download this. Download it. We got it all set. Because we got pretty good mics and headsets up yeah, there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. like, hey, dude, just give me that tape and then upload it so we're good to go. On the podcast machine. Exactly. Exactly. Easy. <laughs> Sounds like a winner. It does to me. Thanks for being here, man. For Anthony, Anthony Holloway, Kelsey, uh, and then the woman in the back. I don't know her legal name. Mm -mm, yeah. Who, um, who does? No, yeah. I don't either. R.I.P. Uh, R.I.P. She's R. probably dead. And so is your buddy for 25 years. Um, that guy that who's, who's now married is probably dead. Uh, for him, too. I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros Podcast. Good night, everyone. <laughs>